Hello again, my little yarnivores and spiderettes and arachnids. Fiber Spider back again with another tutorial just for you. <laughs> All right, so today I am going to be showing you what I would like to call Knitting Lace 101. Mm -hmm. Because in this case, it is not just knitting lace, but showing you the, the, the foundation stitches, what is necessary and involved in creating lace and the different options involved. Yes, a while back, there was the 2020 Ice Yarn Challenge from Creative Grandma, and it was to create a piece, whether crocheted or knitted, using ice yarn or another yarn. Well, I used for this piece, this was Pound of Love by Lion Brand, and they were so very kind to provide me with this yarn. Thank you, Lion Brand. And I created an organic knitted lace, uh, freeform, organic, random, however you want to call it, and the response was mind-blowing. I, I was really, really quite pleased with the response. It was so nice of all of you, all the lovely comments, and this was actually a lot of fun to do, no actual pattern, and I didn't want to jump right into doing the, what I call, a lace-along, where I'm going to show you how you can do this. What I want to do first is Knitting Lace 101, because I want to show you the different kinds of decreases, how they work, and the different kinds of ways that you can manipulate your eyelets, your yarn overs. So that being said, we're going to do this. First part is going to go mostly into the, the decreases involved. Now, obviously, you're going to need some knitting needles. Uh, I am going to be using a size 15. Now, that is considerably big for this weight of yarn, which is a weight of, I would say, three, four. Uh, I'm going to be using more of the Pound of Love, and this is the antique white color. And the reason why I use a rather large size needle when I'm doing lace work is because I like for the eyelets to really pop. That's personal preference. Um, for this weight of yarn, you could use a size eight, you know, but I, I, I like to go big or go home. So I'm using a size 15, which is a 10 millimeter needle. You can use whatever works best for you. But again, this is not so much of a follow, do what I do, but this is more of like techniques for right now. Okay. So we're, we're going to do some swatching here and I'm going to show you the different types of decreases involved for doing a piece like this. All right, I hope that makes sense. So without further ado, let's get started. All right, so I'm, I'm just going to, like I said, I'm just doing a little bit of a swatch here. So I'm casting on a bunch of stitches, nothing terribly major, just enough to show you what it is that we're going to be doing. Now, if you need a more in-depth look at doing basic knitting stitches, I will, in the description box, put down how to cast on, how to cast off, um, you know, the, the, the basics, which are necessary. But for this video, it's really about the decreases. And right now, I am really just casting on a completely arbitrary number. It really doesn't matter because this is really just a swatch. So just cast on a bunch, going to do a couple more, and then I'm going to do my first row just knit stitches because it is a beast to start doing lace right after the cast on. So that being said, going to knit the first row. Alrighty. All right. So like I said, I'm going to just quite simply knit the first row just to give us something substantial, you know, something tangible to work with. And this is actually exactly what I did for my larger piece. So I'm just going to knit my way along. Um, also, something that I did not do for 
my larger piece that I, I just showed, um, something that I didn't actually do, but I would strongly, strongly suggest that when you are knitting lace, something with a lot of decreases and yarn overs and so on and so forth, to use a lifeline. Most, most helpful, especially if you make a mistake, as it were. That way, you know, if you drop a stitch or what have you, you can rip out your work back to that place and save yourself a lot of grief. So that also I'm going to put in the description box down below as well. A lot of, a lot of helpful little links today. And um, me, personally, I, knit, I hardly ever use a lifeline. Uh, I like to live dangerously sometimes, but um, I think it's a, a great technique and I highly recommend it, especially if you are unsure about what you want to do. I would strongly, strongly suggest it because if you find that it's not working out quite the way you want it to, you can always rip back and go from there. So we have our first row is just knitted on. Now we're going to get into creating some eyelets and doing some decreases. And we have different kinds of decreases involved. So we're going to get into that now. All righty. All righty. So now we're, we're finally getting to the good stuff. If you're still with me, thank you. All right. But I, I, like to, I like to be thorough. You guys should know this by now about me. All right, so basic rules of knitting lace. For every increase, you need a decrease. It's all about keeping things balanced. That is, of course, if you want to keep a, a shape. You know, in this case, it's going to be a rectangle, which means we don't want to add stitches or subtract stitches from our total. We need an equilibrium. So if you want to create an eyelet, you know, in other words, a little hole in your piece, well, that creates a stitch. So for every stitch that you create, you need to take away. That being said, for every, every yarn over, you need a decrease. Now, doing a yarn over is pretty basic. You know, the, the piece that I showed before, that was all just single yarn overs, um, Nothing, you know, tremendous about that. The different decreases involved, those change the direction of your eyelets. And now that's very important, and we're going to get into that. So when I'm doing my lace, I don't like to start right at the very, very edge. So I, I would say, you know, do a, a, couple of, a couple of stitches to start with. Now... For those of you that are not familiar, this is the garter stitch. I'm just doing all knit stitches. I'm not doing any purls, which I find is a bit easier for all intents and purposes. That's just my personal preference. So doing a couple of stitches. Now, from here, say we want our eyelets to go to the left. Okay, well start by doing a yarn over. I'll show you that again. Basically, we're going from the back around the front, and that is our yarn over. And then to create a left-leaning decrease, what we need to do is first we are going to slip this next stitch knitwise, then knit the next stitch like so. And then that little slip stitch that we just did, we're going to pass that over the knit stitch that we did. Pass that over and drop it. So this is a left-leaning decrease. See how it's angled like that? So we have our, our yarn, over, yarn over right here, and then our decrease. So that evens itself out, okay? And we're going to do that again. And it is also referred to as a, uh, an SKP, a slit one, a knit one, 
and your passing. So an SKP. So going to just knit a couple of stitches in between our, our eyelets. All right, so yarn over and then slip one, then knit the next, and then pass the slip stitch over, and there you go. And we'll do another one. So going to just knit a couple of stitches. All right, then going to yarn over, slip one, knit one, and then pass the slipped stitch over like so. All right, and then just knit the remaining stitches. Alrighty, so then for the next row, because I'm doing the, the garter stitch, every stitch is going to be just knit stitches, okay? Makes it very, very, very simple. If, however, you were doing the stockinette stitch, this side would be purl stitches. So just every stitch is going to be knit. Now, see this right here is a knit stitch. The next one, this one, this is where I yarned over. So you just go in underneath, just as you would normally. And that is going to be our eyelet right there. Now, the reason why I like to do the garter stitch is not only is it for me easier because I'm not doing knits on one side, pearls on the other side, but also because you don't have to worry about your piece curling. See, here's another eyelet just going in. Because if you're doing the stockinette stitch, and if you don't add a border, like a garter stitch border around your piece, it will curl invariably. And we don't always necessarily want a border on our pieces. So that being said, if you do the garter stitch like I'm doing, you will not need a border. It will not curl. It will be hunky-dory. So there is a method to my madness. All right, so I'm now going to show you the next row. All right, so for the next row, as you can see, we have our eyelets here. We have three of them for our little swatch. Now I'm going to show you, because we were doing left-leaning decreases, I'm going to show you how you can continue on with your eyelets going to the left. So I'm going to start right in by doing a couple of knit stitches. Now, for those of you that already know how to do all this, you know, kudos, you know, but there are a lot of people who don't know, and that is why I'm really trying to be thorough because I know it can be very intimidating. All right, so as you can see here, we have reached our first eyelet, okay? Now, if you want your eyelets to travel to the left, well, here's what we're going to do we are going to knit this stitch, the one directly above our eyelet, going to knit that one, and then we are gonna do exactly what we did on the previous row. We're gonna yarn over, and then slip one, 
and then knit the next, and then pass the slipped stitch over. And so as you can see, it's traveling to the left. So we're going to keep going with the other eyelets that we have here. So see, I'm almost there already. So I need to knit two because I need to knit this one and this one. And then we'll do the same thing that we just did. So knit one and then knit this one. And then yarn over, then slip one, and knit one, then pass the slip stitch over, and then we have another one. All right. And then going to do, by the way, if there's like sort of like a, a tapping sound, that is the sound of my cord hitting against my my phone. I'm sorry about that. So we need to again knit two stitches, this one and this one, and then we'll do the yarn over and then the decrease once again. So knit these two. Then yarn over. Slip one, knit the next, and then pass the slip stitch over. And then I'm gonna just knit these last two. All right, so I'm going to knit the next row off camera and then I'll show you the next row. Alrighty, so I knit my last row, and so you can see that our eyelets are traveling to the left, which is exactly what we want, in this case anyway. So I'm gonna show you one more row utilizing the left-leaning decrease, and then I'm gonna show you the right-leaning decrease. So I'm just going to knit up to my eyelet once again. Okay, and yep, here we have our eyelet. So knit that stitch. And then do your yarn over, followed by your slip one, knit one, and I find that it helps if you put your thumb on the slip one so that it doesn't get lost. So I slipped one, knit one, and then pass the slip stitch over the needle and off. All right, then going to knit the next two stitches because that's where our next eyelid is. So knit one and knit this next one and then yarn over, slip one, knit one, Pass the slip stitch over and off. And then we'll do the same thing one more time. Knit these two stitches. Yarn over. Slip one. knit one, and pass the slip stitch over and off, and then just knit this last stitch. Okay, 
So I'm going to knit the next row off camera, and then I'm going to show you how we can go about doing right-leaning decreases. Alrighty. Alrighty, so as you can see, we have three rows of eyelets, and they are all going to the left. Well, what if you want to go to the right? Well, I'm going to show you that. Now, previously, what we did was we knitted up to this stitch and then knitted this stitch and then did our decrease. Well, in this case, if you want to go to the right, well, we're going to need to do the decrease not after, because we previously did it where it was a yarn over, then the decrease. Well, in this case, for a right-leaning decrease, you want to do the decrease, then the yarn over, all right? So in that case, we would do uh, this stitch and this stitch, these two, decreased together, then the yarn over. Okay, so we're going to knit the first three. And then do the decrease, which is going to be a knit two together. So let's knit these first three stitches. And I don't know about you, but this is distracting me. There we go. <laughs> So yes, knit these first three stitches together. And then when you have two stitches left before the eyelet, that is when you knit these two together. And it can be a little bit fiddly at first. So what you might want to do, actually, is you might want to, it's what I sort of call priming the the stitches by going in like this through the front of the stitch. Now, of course, I'm having a little bit of trouble here, but ah, see, there we go. So if you prime the stitches first a little bit, that can help. Gets them used to the idea. See, here we go. So going in to both of these two stitches, you see, and we're going to knit them together. Then do the yarn over. Okay. And then to get to our next, we're going to need to knit these two stitches and then decrease these next two together because this is our next eyelet. So knit the next two stitches. And this is our yarn over that we just did. So knit one and knit two. All right. So we are at that point where we have two stitches, then the eyelet. So you need to knit these two together. Also, if you pull down a little bit, sort of opens it up a little. Okay, there we go. So knit these two together and then do the yarn over. Okay. And we need to do, let's see. All right. So let's see, I need to knit this one and then another one. And then we have our decrease. So it's again, knit two, then do the decrease because we have our eyelet right here. So that being said, knit one and two and then do a knit two together. Just pull these down. So going in to both of these knitting them together, then do the yarn over, and then just going to knit these last three stitches, no problem. All right. So I'm going to knit the next row just as I had previously, and then I'm going to show you how we can keep going in a right-hand direction. Alrighty. 
All right, so as you can see, our three going this way and then our one going to the right. Well, we're gonna keep on with that trend with these three because I like to be thorough. Yes, I may, I may be sounding redundant, but I would much rather be thorough so that you guys get it and so that you will not be as quite as intimidated as I was when I was trying to learn how to knit lace. So to continue on to go to the right, well, we're gonna knit these two stitches first, and then because this is the eyelet hole, we're going to knit these two together because it's always the two before the eyelet that you knit together if you wanna do a right angle decrease. All right, so knit these two. And then, so we're going to knit those two together and then do the yarn over because a lot of patterns a lot of knitting lace patterns. They tell you what to do, but they don't tell you why you're doing it. And that's why I want to do this, because I, I want you to know why, not just how, but why. So I knit those two together, then yarn over, and then we're going to knit these two. And then because the eyelet hole is here, going to knit these two together and then do the yarn over. So that's my yarn over from before. So knit this one and then knit this one and then knit the next two together and then do the yarn over. And of course they wanna be curmudgeon -y. There we go. So knitting. Oh, wait a minute. Wait a minute. No, I am doing it right. Yeah, I, I knit the two. All right. So then knit these two together. Yarn over. And then I have to knit these next two because I need to knit these two together and do the yarn over. So I have my yarn over still on there. Knit one. Knit two. Then knit these next two together. Like so. And then yarn over and then knit across. Okay, so I'm going to again knit my way across and then we will do one more row for good measure. Alrighty. All right, so as you can see, our eyelets are creating sort of like a ziggy zaggy, almost wavy appearance, which is kind of neat, just by going back and forth. All right, so I wanna do one more row for the sake of being thorough. So going to knit the first stitch and then knit two together and then do our yarn over. So just knit this one stitch because we're right at the edge. I'm always at the edge. Hmm. All right, so knit these two together and then do a yarn over. So knit these two together Then a yarn over. All right, now the cord of my needles is getting caught in my tripod. If you'll excuse me for a moment. There we go. All right, I did my yarn over. And then I need to knit two and then knit two together and do a yarn over. So knit one and knit two. knit two together because we are two stitches, then the eyelet space. So 
knit these two together. Come on. There we go. So knit two together. Yarn over. And then knit this one. And knit this one. All right. So we are two stitches before the next eyelet. So knit those two together and then yarn over. All right, knit two together. Yarn over and then knit all the way across. All right, very, very cool. Now, I'm going to knit my way across the next row, and then I'm going to show you, well, what if you want to make one of those eyelets become two eyelets? What if you wanted them to branch out? Well, that's there are a couple of different ways of doing that. I have my preferred method, but I am going to show you another method as well. Alrighty. All right, so off camera, I did knit a little bit because I only wanted these two eyelets, one on either side, because we're going to be increasing this one eyelet and this one eyelet into two eyelets over here and two eyelets over here. So I needed some space. So. I stopped this one down here. I just knit it up. All right, so there are a bunch of different options open to you. Now, the first one is going to be more textbook, and then the second one is one that I personally prefer. So I'm going to show you the textbook version first, which is actually to, um, let me see here, that would be to slip two stitches, then knit one, and then pass both of the slip stitched slip stitches, say that five times fast. So it's slip two, knit one, and then pass the slips over. Okay, that's one method of many. Um, but I'm going to show you that one first, and then I'm going to show you the one that I personally prefer, and I'll show you why. Okay. All right, so because we want an eyelet on either side of this eyelet, we need to knit four. Then we're going to yarn over and do our double decrease as it were. So we're going to knit these first four. And again, I do apologize if I'm being redundant or, you know, too wordy, but I would rather be wordy than to leave doubt in your minds. So I'm going to knit these first four. Okay. And we've reached our eyelet. So now what we need to do is to yarn over, then to slip two stitches. So slip one, slip two, then knit one. and then pass these two slipped stitches over. And then do another yarn over. Okay, now I know that this seems a little bit weird, but all right, so then we're going to knit across until we reach this eyelet. So now for this instance, I'm not going to knit all the way to the eyelet. I'm going to knit until there are two stitches before the eyelet. Okay, because we're going to do both kinds of decrease that we learned just before. So that being said, I'm going to knit these next two stitches. All 
All right, so what we're gonna do is we're going to knit these two together, then do a yarn over here, then going to knit this stitch, then yarn over, and then do a slip knit pass over. It, it seems more complicated, but to me personally, it makes more sense. So, and I'm gonna show you how to do it. Sorry, we're gonna knit these two together first. So knit these two together. Then do our yarn over for a, a right leaning decrease. So we knit two together, then a yarn over, then knit this one. Then yarn over again, then slip one. knit one and pass the slip stitch over. So now we have two yarn overs and a knit stitch in between, which will become more obvious on the next row. Now, the textbook example, I probably messed up the placement on that because it's not a technique that I normally use. So I am more than willing to own up to making a mistake if I did. If I didn't, hooray for me. But if I did, it's because I don't normally use it. Now, I, I don't wish to mess any of you up by any means, but I do want to give you guys choices and options because, well, variety is the spice of life, and uh, just call me Mrs. Dash. <laughs> All right, so I'm going to knit my way across this row, and then we will see what the results are for the next row. I'm just going to do the rest of this row off camera, and then I'm going to show you what we've got. Alrighty. All right. So what I was saying before about, you know, don't you wish you used a lifeline? Well, this is what happened with that textbook double decrease. Now we did have, we went from one eyelet to two eyelets. Yes, we did. However, it is shifted over. Now, that is not what I personally wanted, okay? What I did do over here, now this is my preferred method of choice. See, it creates a perfect V. That, that, I, that I like, yes. Um, you know, and it creates a perfect V. Now, I think the reason why was because I did my yarn over a little too early. So we're going to do it again. Like I said, I am willing to admit my, my faux pas, my, my mistakes. So we are going to try it again, you know, for, for the sake of argument. So I created two eyelets up here and we're going to try it again. Now this, this is my personal preferred technique that I will be using during my lace along for lack of better term. Uh, this, this method, not so much. So we're going to try it again. All righty. All right, so here we go. We're going to try this textbook method once again. All right, this time I'm going to knit the first two stitches, then slip these two, then knit this one, and then pass the two over. I think that should do it. You know, again, this this is not my preferred method. You know, just, just putting it out there, you know. All right, so I'm going to start by knitting these first two stitches. Okay, then do the yarn over, okay, and slip these two stitches. So slip one and slip two. There we go. And we still got the yarn over right there. Then knit this stitch. And just hang on to those two slipped stitches, okay? 
knit this stitch and then pass these two slipped stitches over and off like so. Then yarn over and knit until we reach our next area. Sort of stuck for words there for a second. Okay, now looking back, see now it looks like I went over too far, <laughs> too far to the right. Well, hey, I gave it the college try, you know, so to speak. All right, but this, this really is my preferred method. Okay, so I'm going to knit one more. Okay, so now I've got my eyelet right here. I've got these two before, which I need to knit those two together. So knit these two together, yarn over, knit one, yarn over, slip one, knit one, and then pass the slip stitch over and then knit these last two. Now that that is the method that I am going to be using. Um, it is definitely my preferred method. It seems like there's a lot more work involved, but to me, it's like, yes, I know where I'm at as opposed to the textbook version, which, nope, apparently I don't know where I'm at. Um, I imagine that if I practiced it more, which I probably should have done for the sake of this tutorial, um, then I would not have been making these mistakes. So I'm going to knit this row and I will meet back up with you to see just how badly I did with that. Okay. All right. So again, we have my preferred example, which I, again, I really dig it. It looks nice and spiffy. And then we have my, my faux pas as it were. Yes, it, it went to the right but apparently it went a little too far to the right. See, with this one, these two go straight up and down, and then there's this one on the side. Well, then we have these two up and down and one on the side. Well, I never said I was perfect. I never said I was an expert. This just proves it. <laughs> okay, so that being said, yeah, at any rate, <laughs> that being said, um, like I said, this, this is going to be my preferred method, which I really, really do like. It does feel like there are more steps, but I have yet to mess this particular one up. And I really do like it as far as a double decrease because we're doing two eyelets. So it's a double increase. It's a double decrease. It depends on how you look at it. But overall, these are the basic building blocks of how you too can create lace knitting. Yes. Now, granted, yes, this was a swatch. This was nothing major. This was to get you used to the idea of what to do if you want to go to the left or to the right, or if you want to have one sprout into two. Yes, you can. That being said, uh, I do also plan on showing you how you can manipulate your eyelets as well. Not in this video, but I do plan on showing you how you can manipulate your eyelets so that they can be even bigger. Personally, I think that this is just fine for my purposes, but I think that it might be fun to show you how you can tweak your eyelets so that they pop even more if you are of a mind to. So. With that being said, I really hope that you enjoyed this, that you found it informative in spite of the repetition and the faux pas. <laughs> I hope that you liked it. And if you did, please give me a little thumbs
thumbs up button down below. I really appreciate your appreciation. Also, uh, I'm going to, like I said, put some links down in the description box down below. Hope you find those helpful. Also, of course, please do check out my other YouTube channel, Fiber Spider Games, where I do video game playthrough and commentary. Also, my Etsy store. Check that out. And also, I have been selling merchandise lately. If you'd like to um, you know, purchase some Fiber Spider swag, you can do that too. So all those links are going to be in the description box down below. And uh, yeah, so work on your techniques. Yes, work on your techniques better than I have. You know, perhaps you can even do better than I with this. Oh, this. Oh, oh. Let's just ignore him for now. Um, and until next time, I want all of you to stay inspired, stay caffeinated, and stay stitching. I love you guys, and I'll see you in my next video. Bye for now.